Hi everyone, I'm Gordon Stobie. I'm from Seaforth, Nova Scotia in Canada. And uh, I'm actually amazed that I'm sitting here and talking to you about the North American Fiddlers Hall of Fame. I never dreamt that this would be somewhere that I would be inducted at some point, and I'm so happy that this has happened. Um, for me, it's kind of a culmination of a, a, a long, long time of playing the fiddle, teaching the fiddle, and writing fiddle tunes, playing for dances. And uh, I'm so happy to be joining people like Patty and Calvin. These are friends of mine from Canada. I knew Graham Townsend at the end of his life. So uh, I feel like I'm entering into some amazingly special company. Uh, I want to thank the North American Hall of Fame people for inducting me, for asking me to be inducted. I want to thank the people that nominated me and all the people that supported my nomination. Uh, it's a thrill of a lifetime. And uh, here I am. And, and uh, I, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've done uh, in the fiddle world and, and how I maybe how I got here, but I'm going to do it uh, through a couple of tunes that I've I've written. I'm going to play a few tunes and, and uh, I'll just preface the tunes by maybe a little short story about some of my influences. Um, I do want to say that I spent a lot of my time writing fiddle tunes and playing fiddle and recording, but I've also spent a lot of really, really quality time mentoring and working with young players, students, um, older players as well. Um, I've really, I think that probably teaching has been a real important niche for me. Um, my in the summer of 2019, my 26th book uh, um, of fiddle-related materials. It could be repertoire or how-to or, or self-help kind of stuff. My 26th book is coming out, so I spent a lot of time doing that, uh, thinking about how to help fiddle players, how to move them forward. And um, uh, the, the rewards that I've gotten from teaching have been absolutely as important to me as the rewards that I got from playing or from recording or, um, or, or from any of the other media things. I had a TV show in Nova Scotia in the Maritime Provinces for for eight seasons. Um, a, a traditional show where we had bluegrass players and we always had an instrumentalist and mostly always a fiddle player. Once in a while, maybe a guitar or a banjo, but but fiddle was always prominent. We had bluegrass bands and and traditional maritime singers. Uh, we had step dancers on every show, so that was another part uh, of my life that I'm very proud of, and and it was well received. And we, I wouldn't say discovered, but we presented an awful lot of young people, who later on went to become, uh, you know, a famous musician. So that's um, an important part of my life too. So anyway, I'm going to play a few tunes for you, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about them. The Emma Lake Fiddle Camp in Northern Saskatchewan is one of the very first fiddle camps in Canada and was a seminal kind of a event for most of us that went there. I taught there for a number of years uh, and uh, it was there that I was inspired to start composing music because a lot of the people that taught there regularly were composing. Um, I met a lot of players there and I often would sit and uh, in my cabin at night and write little tunes for my students as I, as I was teaching. So uh, one little tune that I wrote was called is has been called the the Pelican Reel, and uh, it, somehow this tune was one of those tunes that just sort of spread everywhere. And so you can barely go anywhere in certainly in Western Canada or in the in the Maritime Provinces and say let's play the Pelican Reel, and almost everybody there knows it. Kids particularly like to play it. It's not a hard tune to play, but it has a certain kind of a feel that kids like. So here is the Pelican Reel.
fiddlers that I know have spent time in the construction trades. Uh, they're working with wood either making fiddles or building houses or making furniture or what have you. I worked in the, the house building trade for a number of years with a good friend of mine, Dougie Romans, who's a fiddle player from here in Nova Scotia. And uh, during the week we built houses together and it was a joyous and a joyful occupation. And on Sunday evenings we met in uh, his music room for probably 10 years every Sunday evening and played fiddle together, which was even more joyous than building houses. Um, we once built a house on a great big clay hill that kept moving and shifting and sagging and slumping and we had lots of interesting problems to solve there. Um, while I was working there, this tune sort of came to me and I'm going to play it now. It's called the Clay Bank Reel. And uh, every time I play it, I'm reminded of being up to my ankles in red Nova Scotia, wet, rain, soggy mud. Um, it wasn't as bad as it seems. The house turned out okay and uh, the people were happy. So here's the Clay Bank Reel. <laughs> I'm a first generation Canadian. My parents were immigrants to, to this country and uh, I have no instrumental music background in my family anywhere. I'm, I guess I'm probably the first person that ever played a, a, an instrument seriously. Um, I started off with, um, I, I begged my parents for a, an instrument. When I was seven years old they bought me my first instrument. I wanted a guitar. What I got was an accordion. Uh, but still, it was an instrument. So I, I fooled around on that for a while. It took me a long time to get to the fiddle. Uh, it was in my mid to late 20s when I finally discovered it. And, uh, and so I have no musical, uh, no musical tradition in my family. So I was able to look wherever. Um, I met a, uh, when I was learning to play, I met a fellow from New York State um, who had moved up to Canada during the, the Vietnam War. And uh, we became very, very good friends. And he was a fiddle player, a much better fiddle player than I was. But he, he hung around with me, and, and he really helped me out a lot. His name was Bernie Jaffe. And in later years, we, uh, we, we composed a lot of music together. And he passed away uh, unhappily a few years back. Um, but one tune that we did play, and he introduced me to American traditional old-timey music, which was just a revelation to me. He also introduced me to bluegrass music, and he introduced me to the, the music of one of my favorite all-time fiddle players, Kenny Baker, who is a, uh, also in the, the North American Fiddler's Hall of Fame. Um, so uh, I'm so thankful to Bernie for introducing me to old-timey music. So we wrote a tune for banjo uh, and fiddle, uh, and we called it Last Day in Town, kind of a tip of the hat to, to uh, Kenny Baker, who had a tune, of course, called First Day in Town. And, uh, and so I'm going to play uh, Last Day in Town right now. And this is a, a great memory for me to remember Bernie and my early days of playing, which were, were some of the happiest days of my life.
thank you all for listening to these few tunes. Uh, I just want to mention that I've uh, I've been involved in for the last four years in a project of writing and recording twin fiddle tunes with a friend of mine, Saskatchewan fiddler J.J. Guy. Uh, we've got four CDs of uh, completely original twin fiddle music, so that's been an exciting uh, last four years of my life. Um, I want to thank you all again for this inclusion in this wonderful, exciting, elite group of North American fiddlers. I'm just I'm tickled beyond anything to be joining some of my fiddle heroes. I've got, you know, when I think of some of the names here, Bob Wills and Kenny Baker, and on and on and on, um, I'm, I'm humbled and I'm full of gratitude for, for, uh, for being included in this, in this number. So thank you all, um, and uh, I hope that I run across you someday, and I hope maybe come down to visit and play a few tunes there in person. I'm, this weekend I'm in northern British Columbia uh, teaching at a fiddle camp, which is one of my all-time favorite things to do. So, so um, I miss being there, but uh, I'm in a good place too. So uh, thank you once again, and, uh, and so long. <laughs>